I'm gonna do these guys. Here we are. Look at that. Why don't you hit that right there? Hey, everybody. I'm Aaron Fisher here, uh, joined by Adam Grace and Alex and Steve from Conjure Community, the world's best magic club. And in today's video, you're going to get a taste of what a great magic club can okay. offer you. So please do us a favor. If you like what you see and you're really going to like what you see, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you will be notified every time we go live with awesome new magic videos. So Gracie, what are we going to do today? Well, you might notice that the both of us are in the same room for the first time in a long time. Hola. That's because we are having a little uh, a little Conjure Community Summit of our own. A little drink. <laughs> and uh, on the panel with us here are Steve Barcelona, Alexander Slimmer. And today we are going to look at our good friend, Michael Emar. Who is that? Well, he's our good friend, and just so happens to be tomorrow night at Conjure Community Live, Michael Lamar stopping by to do an epic living room lecture. Who? Let's take a moment. Who here doesn't know who Michael Amar is? Throw a one if you don't know who Michael Amar is. There's no one. He's won all the awards. He's created all the magic. I would say Michael Amar is known around the world as not only one of the best magicians on the planet, but the greatest magic teacher of probably the last century. He's the only guy when I go see him lecture, I buy everything he has. I don't know how he does. Like it. a child, like, like a, a child. like a child at his first Michael Amar lecture. When David Letterman, the notorious magic hater, softened enough in his last years of network television to go, oh, all right, I'm gonna have a bunch of famous magicians on. Now I will not name all those famous magicians, some of whom are my heroes, one or two, not so much, but he had a bunch of famous magicians on and you got to see Mike Amar. You know, people, well, anyone who does so many magic lectures must not be like, you know, able to work the chilies the way I do. Well, Mike, <laughs> he showed up at night <laughs> and the cameras are all wrong and no one cares, no one's trying to help you. And he laid the hammer down like Thor. Like Coupon. literally beat up Amar to the point where he was delighted, not snarkitizing and doing the stuff he does. So Michael Amar, is going to do more magic at this thing uh, than you've ever seen in a magic lecture. He's going to teach it more, more succinctly. And he's had such a body of work. Good Lord. Should you just tell everybody what, what they need to do to register? Because this is that rare situation where we're making it possible. That's true. Literally is a public service for the world. Right, Our right. CC club right. lectures are for CC club members. The Once in a blue moon since this plague began here in the land, We've decided on this is only the second time. The summer is here. People are having to cancel plans. They wanted to do stuff. We have decided to make this lecture open live to all of our fellow magic friends around the world. So last time, I think we maxed out at a thousand because that's the like literally the number of people that, you know, chat's pretty, pretty exciting. The chat situation is pretty exciting with a thousand people, you know. Uh, I just put a link Super in nice. chat on uh, on the YouTube channel. So if you're watching that on the YouTube channel, uh, check out the link that I just put in chat. That's your way to sign up. I'm going to put it right here, of course, in chat here. So the rest of you guys can get it if you have. And, and of course, if you're a CC club member, you knew about that already. You're going to be here. Just a quick note, service announcement for CC club members. Come early and get a seat. Come early and get a seat. All right. We'll do anything for all of you. Come early and get a seat. Now, that being said, Michael Amar has got such a body of work, such a tremendous body of work, and it is all a uniformly astonishing quality. So, Alex, why don't you give us just one note? What are we going to watch first? Just a, just a little. Some greatest hits, right? Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, but really, this first one was one that was one of my introductions to Michael. And for me, this is a special one because I think it's it's just one of the most magical things that I still have a memory of. We saw in one of these afternoon astonishments recently something similar to this, but I think this is pure. I don't want to say anything about the effect. I just want you to enjoy it. I just think it's pure, beautiful magic that uh, I think just transcends. And it's with uh, a very famous uh, spectator. Uh, oh. This is the uh, educational part of this. Do you have a bill? If you've got a bill, I'll show you something that... Uh, doesn't matter the value. It's a dollar, all right? <laughs> Obviously, you trust me. <laughs> okay, now here's the educational part. You see, every bill has uh, silk fibers woven into the paper. If you see tiny hairs in the paper, that's silk fibers to make them difficult to counterfeit. Right. 
Okay? Now, if I were to take those silk fibers and rub them onto some wool like this, mm -hmm. puts a static electric charge onto the silk fibers of the bill. Right. Okay? Now, equally as insignificant <laughs> is the fact that if I crumble just like this, now the static electric charge is trapped inside of the bill. Okay? Now, a little static on my hand. There'll be static on the bill. There'll be static on my hand. In theory, the two should attract. It would look something like this. Did you see it move? Yeah, I'm starting to... Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, uh, no, actually, that is it. Uh, but if I put more static, it works a little better. See? All right, got it. <laughs> yeah, now he's good. <laughs> Is the just like this now? Have you guys ever seen? You know, they often talk about how Johnny Carson is known for loving magic and being like super cool. If you had to do magic on the Tonight Show, notice how they gave him. They're like, "What do you need?" Sure, I'll come over there and want, you know, when you do the magic on the letterman, you have to sit in this unpleasant spot, which is a lot like doing magic on an airplane for a person, which right. isn't what you choose, you know, but letterman's like, you'll make it work and we'll photograph you from underneath or whatever would be least pleasant. Have you ever seen John Carson spend so much time re refusing not to do anything that lets the audience break their attention away from Michael's build up to that effect? Like there's like three or four moments where Johnny goes, hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can almost feel him directing all of America to Michael. Well, he knows what the secret is of close-up magic because he practiced and learned close-up magic. So he knows it's not about him in that moment. And he's real good at putting the spotlight where it needs to be so that you can get get the juice out of the moment, right? Get what you're supposed to get and actually get that that punch from the magic trick. So it's uh, he's very, very skilled in that regard, making sure that Michael just looks like a star. And Michael... Look how smooth in the pocket he is. You know, when we, we watch some other Carson stuff, really great magic on Carson, right? There, there's that feeling, though, when you watch most of it, like everyone knows they got five minutes on Carson, and it has a, a little bit of that feeling like uh, your last per minute type thing, like when you're watching comedy. But Michael has really got this laid back, chill vibe, even though he hasn't opened yet. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, now he's good. <laughs> but people see that. They think there's something on the bill that would cause it to happen. And, no, that's just... Or they think that maybe there's something on my hands that would cause it to take place. There's nothing on my hands. I'll do it again. I'll put a little more static on it this time. Okay, just like this. Put a little static on the bill. Crumble. It's trapped inside. Put a little static on my hand. Mm -hmm. Just like this. <laughs> I do this for myself at home sometimes. <laughs> I just laugh. <laughs> rub, rub your hand on your leg. Yeah. Oh, you work. <laughs> I like it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if it's just right, it could float right back to you, just like this. Here's yeah. There you go. Yeah. That yeah. was magical. That was magical. It's beautiful. You know how people are always asking us in, in our meetings and stuff about, like, you know, Ooh, what should we work up? I can't do this trick. I don't have like uh, the presentation all worked out. You know, Mike's like, uh... <laughs> oh, all right. It's pretty good now. All right. <laughs> Let's do it this way, this way. All right. Watch. I really appreciate hey. it. I really appreciated the whole getting into that trick with the, you know, that move to the leg there. I think mm -hmm. was a, that was a beautiful moment there. For you yeah. guys who do this kind of stuff, you know what I'm talking about. And also, this was pre-ITR, right? What's, right. what's an yeah. ITR? An ITR? 
Are you trying to tell me that that wasn't like magic per se? I've worked very hard to keep myself as a professional magician with the mind of a child. I got you. Okay. I'll, I'll say put the earmuffs on next time I discuss something. Are earmuffs involved in that trick? <laughs> he didn't say he was. Earmuffs is the earmuff as method. <laughs> so you're saying that's a trick we can all do. Yeah, William Neagle said, are you telling me that Amar just got real? Hey-o! Hey it, it spelled R-E-E-L, which could be a typo. Mm. You decide. Actually, there is um, backroom training on that. I love that <laughs> trick a lot. I, uh, so in the CC world, you could actually explore some of those techniques that are uh, being performed there. I uh, fell in love with this trick early on in Magic and, you know... Had to learn it, had to do it, and still do it. Every once in a while, I bust it out. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of magic. And once you understand the concepts that are involved, the whole thing is really practical and pretty easy to do once you have the courage to work with that stuff without fear. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Alex, what's the name of our training for the members that is in the vault for folks right now? I think it's called Introduction to, Fl to Flotations and Animations. That sounds right to me. I would have to, I can look real quick. Hang on. I think there's an A, P, and A. Yeah, introductions to flotations or and animations. And if it's not that, it's the other. It's animations and flotations. There you right? go. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's the best starting place you'll ever find. And you don't have to spend a fortune on some kind of rig that's made to have like how Batman would float a, you know, a bill. No, the way the way that's taught there, the reality is, is if you go with the, the effect that you just saw Michael do for probably about ten dollars you can get what be what would be considered a lifetime supply of the stuff needed to do that trick mm -hmm. uh there seems to be a bit of an argument among the greatest magic scholars depending on how wild out your presentation is and how bad your history is but this is definitely the oldest trick in magic recently i've heard it was eight thousand years old which i think predates vertebra uh some people yeah. say several hundred years other people claim that they have found it uh, on the hieroglyphs in Egypt. Although personally, I think they were actually just showing the first bartenders. Let's watch Michael perform uh, the the also the, noble the trick of the Sphinx. Develops their ability as they perform it, and this is it. It's a classic. In fact, it's kind of a rite of passage for all sleight of hand performers, starting with three simple cups and one thing very important: a magic wand. Because all I have to do is reach and squeeze like this. And I get a little baseball yes. right from the tip of the wand. That's for cup number one. Now, for cup number two, all I have to do is take it and spin and tap. And I get a second ball yeah. for a second cup. Now, you can do other things with these same props. For example, I could just touch, put a little magic onto the cup. And solid passes straight through solid. That's an impossible <laughs> penetration. Oh, but, uh, but that's ball number one for cup number one. That's ball number two for cup number two. For the third, all I have to do is spin the wand twice. Once, twice, and tap. I get ball number three oh right where I want it, right on top of the cup. Now that you uh, have them out here, it's time to start the effect. Now, you know, at, at each phase, I'm actually... Yeah, who's... Third appearance, pretty pretty dope right there. Who doesn't love that like third appearance? Thing, yeah. Hey, is that third appearance Vernon? Or is that Amar? I would say, yeah, Who's I would say Amar, Amar Goshman in, inspired. <laughs> on top of the cup. Now all the two. They really do react to it like crazy, don't they? Did everyone catch that out there in the universe? That third appearance is the shitting dong. Third, all I have to do is spin the wand twice, once, twice, and two. I get ball smooth. number three oh right where I want it, <laughs> right on top of the cup. Now that you uh, have... That was smooth. It's so. like you did it before when nobody was watching. Sometimes you see a magician and you get the sneaking suspicion he did it once or twice beforehand, maybe even a day or two days before performing it in you know on tv not not this though and we're not into that by and large we don't want to spoil the illusion of the first time but mike lamar i suspect he did this once or twice before and writing a book about it he wrote a book about it so probably so had you're saying he's got experience yeah 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 it, it looks like, just like the way my mother tried to convince me but i got her under duress to admit that she had been romantically with my father once. 
twice she said actually she had allowed it twice and i have a brother so it makes sense <laughs> let's keep going have them out here it's time to start the effect now you know at, at each phase i'm actually going to make it easier and easier to follow so there's no chance for confusion and if you think about it it's already pretty simple all i do is close my hand okay nothing funny and i push the wand through the hand and ball number one disappears now you may not have known what to expect so i'll do it again in fact i'll do it exactly the same way just a little different that's ball number two now ball number three i'll tell you what i'm going to do i'll actually leave my hand open so that you see the moment that the ball disappears all i have to do is tap and when it disappears, it goes back to the cup. That's one, that's two, and of course, that's three. <laughs> you know, I said I'd make it. That's a pretty good set right there. For all those of you who don't know, I'm pretty sure Michael Amar is there at the old Caesar's Magical Empire, which was mm, like an that's what it looks like, $80 million right. dollar magic dinner theater inside Caesar's Palace, which has now been ripped out and turned into something else. The slogan, uh, something in, in Latin, because we used to say it uh, there, uh, working in and around uh, for Caesars. Uh, Quid is called habis et habis, which was meant to say whatever you believe is real is real. But we knew in our heart that what it meant was whatever you believe is veal is veal. <laughs> so, uh -huh. people. so when Michael does this, Michael's got the best hands. There are some people, right? who have bad case of magic finger, right? So, yeah, and it, and it pops up all over the place. You know, it, it's like, it's meant to feel clean or magical. This. Yeah, it, it's the same thing. It's classy, it's classy martini finger, right? Now, other people, especially people who are really serious about sleight of hand, sometimes we've seen this before, Alex, some of our friends, they have webbed fingers, right? Right, yeah, pause because the yeah. uniformity yeah. dictates, you know, there are times when you can't open your hand, but then you feel like those folks are so uniform, right? Now watching Michael, everything from his wand work to the vanishes, the fingers are closed when they should be closed. The pinky is out when it's helpful, but none of it, it's never, that's the thing that are picking out, like you're like, ooh, classy. Like whenever you see a person with their pinky out ostentatiously, don't you think, so classy, he's got magic finger, you know? Mm -hmm. Watch Mike's hands when he's doing this. Uh, it's really a subtle thing. I want to ask one more question to you kids. Are these famous Paul Fox cups that I always hear people bragging on? Uh, I think these might be. It's the Paul Fox style. Basically, the Paul Fox style is that double bead on each cup. Mm -hmm. uh, I think these might be those ones that he's currently he's currently pushing, which are very okay. similar to the ones that we have in our world. I'll just say one other thing. You know, I've seen these baseballs. Those are baseballs, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Those, I've never been into the baseballs very much, but these are like worn set of baseballs. They look like someone's been playing ball with those baseballs for a while. And they yeah. look a thousand times cooler than big, white, shiny, brand new miniature baseballs. Do you, Agreed. Can see you know why? Because they, uh, they match the cups, right? They look like the balls and the cups are a set. And I, I think the, the other thing about them is that because they're scuffed, they're sort of they're unnoticed they're just unremarkable right. they're just a ball so if you want to focus in on it you'll go oh wow that's a baseball but if not it's just a thing you just don't pay attention to it mm -hmm. sort of like the cups they're just this old thing that are there for the trick i don't think i know those were baseballs at all if i didn't sort of know that i saw that pattern mm -hmm. right. they don't look like i always felt it was weird when you see a man with three old cup a wand and three shiny white baby baseballs that yeah. it looks like an <laughs> squoze or something like Thor, Thor squoze a baseball, you know, these look beautiful. And there he is in the basement. Whatever you believe is veal is it easier to follow. So I get rid of one of the balls. I'll even get rid of one of the cups. Now think how simple it's going to be. I'll even get rid of the wand. two and two piece of cake. No chance for confusion. I'll even do it in slow motion. One ball inside of each cup. No question. All I do is snap, and the balls change places. It's subtle. It's subtle, but uh, you know what? It'd be better if I put two cups over one. I cause this one to join the other one. That way it'd be clear what happens. But I'm going to make it even easier to follow by getting rid of one more ball. I'll get rid of one more cup. Now think how simple it's going to be. All I have to do is blow, just a simple blow and the ball would disappear. Oh, 
Here. The ball disappears, it comes back to its cup. Sometimes I put it over here, I get a little snap, until it comes back to the cup. It works every time, and I tell you what, I want it to end with a surprise. So uh, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll put these back. See, now it's like the three shells in the pea. Would it surprise you if I could make this ball disappear and reappear inside any cup you named? Yes. Yes. Let's see. Yes. Let's Come see. on. Let's see what you got. Well. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm gonna> see. <laughs> Okay, I, I'll tell you what, I'll do it different. I'll put it away, and this time I'll just snap. Now, when I just snap, you can never tell what'll turn up. Get it? See? Turn up. <laughs> That's a turn up. That's a lemon. That's a big ball. This is for you. <laughs> so great. So great. Literally the most pleasant hands to see do that trick. Did, did y'all notice what I mean? When the pink, sometimes the pinkies are out, sometimes they're not. But there's never any sense that it was one way or the other. Like, he's like, ooh, he's changed his hands now. It's so beautiful to watch that. He's literally, I thought, pinball wizard when I was watching it. You know, he's got a wrist, and you never see a miss, man. There was no doubt. What's so beautiful, I think, is when he's going through that sequence and he's putting the cups aside, and we all know what he's doing, but he pays no, there's no weight to it. It couldn't be any less important. And it just flies right by. It doesn't look guilty. It's just every single thing you see when you see the cups where you go, man, eh, that moment, man, eh, that moment. Yeah. None of that stuff happens. Nope. He does it. None of it happens. It's all so heavenly. Smooth I heard Michael uh, talk about this idea that you're speaking of with you know the the fingers being loose, the hand being clenched only when it needs to be if you're picking something up or holding something. And he mentioned that. <clears throat> This came out of studying art and looking at the Sistine Chapel and looking at the work of Michelangelo and looking at all the hands of all of the angels and all of these figures that are in the ceiling. If you look at all of their hands, they're all in very loose pointing gestures. But if you notice when you're looking at the hands, there's space between them. And sometimes there's a clench and, you know, notice when that clench happens and specifically go back and look at your magic and look at each of these moments and figure out. What is your hand doing? Are you doing unnecessary clenching? Are you doing unnecessary things that are basically betraying the secret of what you're doing in these routines? So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think all of that is very studied and worked out, Aaron. I think Michael, that's one of the reasons we know his name when we say his name is because he did the work of looking at all these beats. Every set, every second is accounted for with what's happening with the hands. If you just take a look at that, going back to that load where he appears the ball under misdirection, there is no, you can picture people doing it. You picture the ball wobbling. You picture the hand kind of having to find it. It doesn't do anything. Yeah, it moves right. down precisely to where it's supposed to be. Like it was just moving. Like there's nothing that when he flips the cup over, it goes one and a half flips, whatever it's supposed to do. Heaven. Mm -hmm. Dude, this next clip looks like he is. I am so excited about the Michael Amar concert on Wednesday. Concert. <laughs> concert. The Michael Amar concert. Michael Amar is going to come give a concert at the concert community, and we're going to be like in the front row, super fanning. <laughs> He's going to do Rosalita. I'm, he could do Jersey Girl and Rosalita. <laughs> He'll do what we want, you know? He could even do like one of his MIA movies, Fishing in Action. <laughs> Chuck Michael in Action. Wrong, wrong Chuck Norris. The facts. All right, this is uh, this is a much a little bit older. Who's that guy. Who is that guy? Right. No, I mean uh, the guy next to him. Oh, it's some lo <laughs> local news station, right? Well, he's overdressed. Yeah. That is. Uh, he's, he's a he's a guy who had a TV show in the, uh, I think in the late '80s. I can't remember his last name. Will something. Uh, I, I, Someone in the chat, someone will put it up. Didn't work Sit out. and sort of entertain anybody. Uh, well, there is that theory. <laughs> I could use a dollar bill of my own, but uh, in these situations, it's probably more interesting if, if I were to borrow one. A dollar? Now, there, it was the chance that perhaps you would, uh, we would get around to this. You know, when I started Magic in West Virginia, I used to read the back. So am I going to get this back? Um, there you yes. Go. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I give you my word. I'll give it back to you. Well, I'd take um, a receipt instead. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, instead of my word? <laughs> no, no, heck with the receipt. <laughs> the first trick I ever learned, I read on the back of a box of Cheerios. Now, I'll keep it right here. All I have to do is fold it four times. When you unfold it, instead of being heads up, it's 
upside down. Okay, now that's generally the reaction they always got. <laughs> and I thought, hey, maybe these guys eat Cheerios. <laughs> and it's just, a, it's very simple. It's a forward instead of a backwards. So now I have changed it. I've updated it. I'll do the exact same method, and I'll keep this right at the tips of my fingers. Okay. It'll never go out of your sight. And I'll do the same method. I'll fold it four times. But instead of turning it upside down, I'll turn it inside out. An altogether different effect. Just a squeeze. Does it look any different yet? Not so far. I give it, yeah, there you go. Good. Wow. Very nice. And so it out. Now, 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 I'm going to get in big trouble spending that. That's first. Uh, okay. There's something we want to see, but we would like, we would, we want to see the second half because it would be only fair before we would say anything about this trick in this case. Do you guys agree by unanimous yeah. consent? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. There's a chance, there is a chance this might be a federal offense. Now, here's what these people think at home. Though. They think sometimes maybe it's a Xerox. Right. It's important that you, you fill it and tell it. No, there's it's, no, it's a real Or no. it's not cut and taped. It's, it's cut, a single no. sheet of paper. Yeah. So uh, it makes wow. quite a conversation piece. <laughs> so if you were to, uh, for waitresses and things like that. Yeah, here's your tip, honey. There you go, figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. Okay. I could leave it as it is, or I can change it back. Yeah, Whichever, I, well, uh, it doesn't matter. We'll change it back. Change it back? Change it back. Just to see if... Change oh, it into okay. 100. If you could change it into 100, then... Uh, <laughs> Would I be working here? <laughs> or 1,000 or... Uh, <laughs> okay, it never leaves your sight. Just the same... It's a poor rule that doesn't go both ways. Just a squeeze. You turn an inside-out bill inside-out, it goes back the way it was. Just... Hi. Right. Girl, you, buddy. Just never seen it better. Never seen the thing that that is. In this case, you know, we talk around the stuff. I'm not going to say the thing that it is. Normally we would. But since it was so beautiful, it literally, you didn't see nothing. Stuff that you're supposed to see, you didn't see. Yeah. You know yeah. what I love it's, is. Especially the thumb tip. I didn't see that at all. I didn't mm. see it. I couldn't see either of his thumb tips. I didn't, didn't see it at all. Fingers. I love the way, uh, I guess they're saying his name is Will Schreiner who I, I must confess, I don't recall who that is. He, but he I love the way he's like, am I going to get it back? It's like, hey, Will, it's not going so well with the talk show. You're worried about a buck there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Don't worry, you know. <laughs> Mike has that laid back vibe. Yeah. He did that thing so beautifully. So beautiful. That might be the nicest I've ever seen that done. That's like, what I'm saying. We had, we, had, we had the view no one ever gets, which is four inches from that thing. Mm -hmm. Did anybody right. see anything at all? Mm -mm. Right. If, you, you, if you watch it over and over again, there's a moment where you can see one little peak of something, but you know, you have to be a super geek and that's not the casual observer, the casual at the very end at the very end, the very right. End. But up until the very end, I saw things that you're supposed to see that were not there. It looked heavenly with a hawkeye on it it was so heavenly that you, you say to yourself well i thought it was supposed to not quite be that heavenly it was heavenly he's got his hands are like butter this is my favorite version of that trick because it's the only one that makes sense like all the way right because if you could take a buck and turn it into a hundred you'd never change it back and and it's like he said you'd never leave the house you would just sit there and yeah hundreds all day i mean i literally would do that Right. Like that is literally what I would do. Well, let's put Alex on the spot. I mean, I think we, we agree with you because we, we all know that whenever you take a one and turn it into a hundred, the audience, they request it. A Adam and I were with a dude that, do you remember this, Wes? We were at a party mm -hmm. two nights ago, a dude who remembered meeting me at the hotel cafe when Adam was playing music there. What year? 2008, 12 years ago. He said, you need to do from across a party. I remembered that he made me a hotel cafe. I went, okay, so you need to show that trick again. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, he wants to see the money trick. Mm. That's all he could mean. And I'm like, which one? And he goes, the cash, man. And I'm like, mm, don't do that one anymore. But the point <laughs> is, that's how hard they remember it. Yet, they don't remember how pissed off they get when you change it back or you keep it. There's, it's very much a chemotherapy trick because you can get rid of a problem, but the problem that it develops is it's iffy. You need to have a real problem to want to do it. Uh, 
is very, very serious. Uh, in this question, this is a question from, from Newell. It's a good question. Alex was a buddy, dear buddy, of a guy that was pretty renowned for being obsessed with uh, the methods that make the mismade build happen. You know, what'd you say? You use this uh, word with a, a tip or something. So the question becomes, honestly, did Roger do it as well as that? Because that was smoking. Uh, well, Roger had things to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely had uh, opinions. Opinions about like other people and their renditions? Oh, sure. Sure. What you're sure. But what sure. You when I, when I first, the first time I really hung out with Roger, that was one of the notable things. The first time I really got to hang out with him, we uh, shared a hotel room for a week at an IBM convention in LA. And it was remarkable. We would leave the hotel room just to go to get breakfast or something. And we would get stopped by like a couple people, three people. And then we would go to lunch, couple, three people, you know, walking around the dealer's room, a couple, three people, Roger, I got to show you. And it was like, everyone was looking for the seal of approval from the master and Roger would, you know, give them the time of day and watch the bill switch. But it, we saw the bill switch a lot because Roger was so famous and so attached to it. It ended up being just this, you know, People, people needed to stand next to the guru and have the guru say, ah, good work, kid. Looking good. Mm -hmm. But we had a lot of discussion about it. And, you know, and there, and again, and, you know, I don't mean to say this over and over again, but in the back room in CC, there's, I, I go into it pretty in depth. I show you a lot of the stuff that Roger, what I thought was important about what Roger had to say about it. Even some of the stuff that Michael had to say about it. But in addition, I have a little thing that I, you know, I sort of got the bug bit me too, you know, hanging out with Roger, it starts to happen. And I have a little tiny wrinkle, literally little innovation uh -huh. on it that's in there that, uh, that for me, it sort of changed the game and helped make it that much easier to do. Uh, but I think it's a necessary tool to have if you're dealing with money in any way, uh, especially if you want people to sign objects like a bill you need to be able to uh, have complete control over that bill at any given time. And, and for that, it's, it's worth having the technique more than just doing the straight change. Cause for this effect, I would change it to that mismade bill and probably give it to him. <laughs> I wouldn't change it back. You know, are you not, are you not interested in answering the precise uh, question? Cause I, I don't want to like be like Barbara Walters or anything. I don't want to be like, go back and ask me the precise question. I probably just danced around it. Did uh, well, yeah, but you know, if you meant to, I want to let you in peace, you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. not that much. I guess the question was, is did Roger Klaus really do it as well as Mike just did? I think, I think better. Okay, tell yeah, us why. I think better. Um, I, I think that there's, there's a moment in there for those that know it. If you're looking at what Michael did, he sort of reversed a couple of the actions that are in there. And I don't know that those reversals fixed anything, but I mean, hearing you say your opinion about it and the way you feel about it now, I don't know that it matters so much. Um, you know, it's probably potato, potato kind of a thing, but Roger was very definite and it all was very smooth like this. And there was just nothing to see or say about anything. It just, it felt, it felt probably the feeling that you're getting from this is the same sort of thing that you're getting from Roger, but it's just two different guys doing it. So did it have different pacing? Cause Michael, I felt sure. like Michael was moving at a good, uh, like fold, 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 fold. Or was, I, I always imagine with Roger, that it was more like beat. Yeah. Half moves. Right. Like he's happy to get ready and gesture and talk about something. And remember, we're getting in, you know, I, I think there's a little bit more pausing in Roger. And do you think the pausing happens. actually right. helps like the he's effect? Happy to get ready. Uh, to some extent. But I think, you know, again, that's probably just, you know, I, I like strawberry and you like, you know, you like lemon if you're going to choose one that's on the you table. You know, I'm always going to like this, the slow and sweet if it's. If it's sleight of hand, there's something about feeling like you're supposed to go slower and you're supposed to be able to see more that makes it good to you, makes it like a juicy T-bone steak. Well, at the time, <laughs> Roger was the closest link that I had to Vernon, and now Michael is the closest link that we have to Vernon, right? And for me, it's sort of, a lot of times comes back to that. You know, he's the guy that, that he's, he's the one that everyone's trying to aspire to. And uh, so I, I think at this point, you know, it's probably a moot point, you know, we're, we're, we're all just trying to achieve greatness. And I think no matter how you get there, you know, well, just, just, just for the sake of argument, it is certain, certainly it's not about who's better. 
it, yeah. but it, it, to me, it's all about the looking at the different flavors, because if you don't like the only way to describe the flavor at a certain point of uh, delicacy is to say that that tastes like Roger Klaus, yeah. that tastes like Amar, because really you're dealing with such a, a small number of people that when you hear the way some person plays it, you go, ah, more like that or more like that. And, and when we're starting to get into how you want it to feel, that's the way to go. Now we have one more video in particular that I am very excited about. It's got, oh, we're doing this one next. We're going back to the empire. Did I pick the wrong one? No, thought, no it's the right one. To, got it. David, uh, we were going to old man, the grumpy back, old Back at the empire is right. Whatever you believe is veal, is veal. <laughs> All right. I mean, you really have an interesting element to add to this because now not only do we have our audience, we also have added some security oh, investigators from the casino. We have Pete and Claudio here. They uh, have been trained to watch guys like me doing stuff like this. And they're going to watch every element of things that have taken place. We also have Robert here who's going to be our timer. Uh, now, before we get to exactly what Robert's going to be timing, uh, let's see. Let me uh, see if we can't do a little something. Do me a favor. I, I want to ripple down with my left thumb just say stop anytime you'd like stop. right there see if I separate it right there all I have to do is whistle <laughs> see that's one that's two that's three oh, yeah. and if I get a little snap yes that's four that's one two three four cards we're going to use those four aces and when Robert says go with that stopwatch running to time every second, I'm going to take those four aces and I'm going to shuffle them into four different parts of the deck, but not a normal shuffle. It's going to be what they call a slop shuffle. That's where you take some of the cards face up, some of the cards face down, and you shuffle them face up into face down. But Claudio and P, what I want you guys to do at all times, be making sure there's nothing hidden inside of my hands, make sure there's no extra things coming from anywhere, that we're doing just what we're saying. And Robert, to make sure that I know where I am through those process, I'm going to put those four aces in, shuffle it four times, then I'm going to find those same four aces again, but I'm going to do everything in exactly 30 seconds so that I'll know where I am. When we get to five, go five. When I get to 10, go 10, 15, 20. That way I'll know where I am, okay? And I can start any time that you say go. Go. There's the ace of clubs, the ace of hearts, the ace of spades, the ace of diamonds. That's four aces, four different parts. I'll push them flush. Five. I'll take some of those cards face up, and I'll shuffle face up and the face down and push them flush Damn. just like this. I'll turn them over again. I'll shuffle face up and the face down, push them flush. I need to take some out from 15. the center. Turn them all over and shuffle face up and the face down and push those cards flush just like that. 20. 20. Oh, geez, I shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shuffle. Okay, okay. 25. Okay, stop. How much time had passed when I said stop? 26. 26 seconds. Now, I haven't found the aces yet, but I've been thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was thinking, hey, he's so busy keeping time, you probably didn't get to see anything I was doing, did you? <laughs> I want to catch Robert up on what I've been doing. Claudio, Pete, they've been watching everything. But, Robert, as you can see, the cards are being shuffled face up and the face down. You can even look from the edges and see that all the cards are involved in the shuffle, all the way from the top, all the way to the bottom. You know, as these fellas know, uh, with the classic riffle stacking systems, uh, with practice, you can actually see the cards coming off the thumbs. Now, you see the card you want, then it's just a matter of stopping there, dropping the number of cards you want to put it in the right position. It's a riffle stacking thing. But in any case, I said I was going to do yeah. everything in exactly 30 seconds. I stopped you at 26. I'll count down from there so that you can watch right along with everybody else. Starting again, right at 26, 27, 28, yeah. 29 at 30. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Now, what's neat is that deck that we shuffled face up and the face down. It all faces the same way now. Each and every card, and I found the only four aces in the entire deck. But not only did I find those aces, but in that same 30 seconds, I also stacked the royal flushing clubs. That's the 10, jack, queen, king, ace of clubs, the 10, jack, queen, royal flushing spades, royal flushing hearts, royal flushing diamonds, that's all flushing. Royal flushes. <laughs> wow. So
such an awesome trick. <laughs> That's a great trick. So awesome. I love it. Who among you in the panel? Put a one if you've never seen the rollover aces before. Strong. I felt like a tumbleweed float through. Ah, oh, plenty. Bad. Plenty. Plenty. Ah, going up, going up. People used to be obsessed with the roller race. See, Glenn Goldbeck has just given himself up as one of the old dingle cultists. Mm -hmm. Sort of like those people that followed Batman in The Dark Knight Returns, you know, Sons of the Bat. Or is that a thing? Like, really? Gold Goldbeck <laughs> had two Ds tattooed to his chest, like an 88. Derek Dingle? Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's Newell's old, Newell's old teacher, too. So, um, I want to know uh, if that trick, yeah, I, is it a pretty difficult trick? It's on an easy to master card, Miracles Tape, and I think Mike was going to have it pretty, I think it was used to be considered to be a particularly difficult trick, but I think uh, Mike's got it smoothed down. I think he easy. flattened the curve. Yeah, he made it easy to understand, you know, if you put in the work, but it's not concepts that are going to, and techniques that are going to be so out of the realm of possibility that you're going to look at it and go, no way. There's no way. It's totally something you could do. Anyone could do. You're and Mike, Mike's there, not guys. doing the, the stuff in it that's hard in a way that it needs to be practiced for years to do. So you can, you know, it's, it's, it's a gambling trick, right? Mm -hmm. It's a gambling trick about skill. So there's a school of thought that says that certain things that he did in the trick need to be done in such a way that you have to practice it for a long, long time and meet a weirdly high standard. Uh, but not for this trick. You just need to shuffle those cards and get them shuffled, ham dog your way through. Basically, you need to be able to shuffle the cards and let five of them go at once at the end. You know, that, that's it. And if you can do that... And, and a handful of false shuffles before you get there that look like the real ones. Mm. Meh. Meh. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, Zero himself would probably say uh, it's harder than that. <laughs> I don't feel like Michael like, Hamar's audience was feeling that way. You know what I'm saying? He was doing them so fast. He was doing the zeros so fast, too. It was like geez. Everyone's watching the watch, you know what I mean? Everyone's yeah, yeah, watching yeah. the clock. It's a, it's a whole shtick, you know what I mean? There Absolutely beautiful. And there. a fun trick to run through and not certainly, certainly easier that way I believe than what I read in that Derek Dingle book a long time ago when I was considering mm -hmm. getting a tattoo like Glenn. <laughs> Newell, did you ever get the uh, double D tattoo? Can you imagine getting your double D tattoo being a real Dingle cultist card carrying, right? You're, it's like Clockwork Orange, you're walking around Manhattan, like with your droogs at the milk bar, you know, your double D guy. And then Dan and Dave show up, and they're the new Devil Double D, D and yeah. it's a whole different mm -hmm. thing, you know. I've seen guys that have that tattoo of the of the new Double D as well. So there's, you know, they they they're the the Double D of their time. It, it, it's you know what was the I forget what I, Lee Asher and I went off to Sacramento. It was probably the year we met uh, Alex, although we didn't know it. Derek Dingle. We were so excited to see him because he was like Derek Dingle. He was like a myth and he didn't do magic anymore. And it was going to be like a thing. And it's always kind of scary when these things happen because you know the guy's coming out of retirement, which you know is dicey, right? Because to come out of <laughs> retirement after like 20 years of heavy sleight of hand means you better have been coming out of retirement like 10 years ago practicing, right? Because that shit just doesn't happen like when you practice like three weeks before the event, right? Yeah. <laughs> so as you might imagine, we get to the convention and Derek Dingle is loaded up drunk sit and sorry for your teacher rest and soul but it's a good moral friends practice derek was sitting at the bar with the complete works of derek dingle attempting to figure out how any of it worked on the first day of the convention no and i and then and he met lee asher and lee asher did some outlandish driving board double some <laughs> aerial double left or something and, and Derek Dingle, I literally thought he was going to have like a concussion. It was like he was having a rough time. I mean, he wasn't. It's not fun to have to go do a magic lecture and be out of practice. Not that I would know, but I've read. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard, you know, about that idea. And so he's not having a great time. He's, he's loaded. He's trying to learn his shit. He's feeling a little bit off his kit. Lee goes, hey, watch this. 
you know. <laughs> and Dingle goes, that's the craziest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> and that was the time I met Derek Dingle. So, you know, it's not always what you hope it's going to be when you meet your heroes. Did he sound like Arthur when he said that? Yeah. He totally sounded <laughs> the like The whole time, him. dude. <laughs> <laughs> but Arthur had never had quite caught up with him yet, right? This was like old Arthur and the liver had gone. What does that mean? This whole thread is pissing off Dana Daniels. I bet it is. And and also Derek Delgadio. Huh. But to uh. tell a family secret, Derek's kind of pissed anyway. Always. That's like part of his character. So I don't I'm think the we, angry card guy. I don't Urgh. think we've got time for the last one, unfortunately. But, mm, but we're going to see that trick tomorrow night at the Michael Amar concert. That's right tomorrow night folks if you are not in conjure community it doesn't really matter because you can still come to the lecture check the link in chat it's a very personal link we put in chat on uh youtube sign up come see michael amar gonna be a free concert michael amar down at the park the hell's angels will be doing security things could get freaky in case you were concerned that the 60s need to end so aside from that we hope you had fun today. So do us a favor, hit the like button, which tells YouTube that we're doing a sweet job with these videos. And while you're at it, smash that subscribe button right now. We are launching new videos every day. You do not want to miss what's coming next. That's right, because at Conjure Community Club, we do these jams all the time. And if you've never tried out a proper magic club, there's a link in the description where you can learn more about why we are the best magic club in the world. Thanks for joining us, guys. We will see you on the next Afternoon Astonishment and the rest of you tomorrow night for the Michael Lamar 